For the past few years, I've been running my home studio mostly on solar using 380 watts of panels and these three lead acid batteries. It went well for the first two years, but each year the batteries held less and less capacity and by year five, they could only power my studio for about eight minutes. It was time to replace them. And now that the cost has come down so much, I decided to switch to lithium and I bought this 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from a company called Ampere Time. My three lead acid batteries added up to 185 amp hours, but with lead acid having only a 50% discharge depth, that gave me only 92 and a half amp hours. And when those batteries were brand new, they could run my studio for about five to six hours after the sun went down. This lithium iron phosphate battery should provide me with twice the runtime, along with a number of other advantages, one of them being the lifespan. Lead acid batteries can only be charged a few hundred times before they degrade significantly whereas lithium iron phosphate can be charged thousands of times. Even after 4,000 charge cycles, a typical lithium iron phosphate battery should still hold 80% of its original capacity. This is the plus edition of Ampere Time's 200 amp hour battery, which means it has a 200 amp BMS rather than the standard 100 amp, so it can be charged and discharged at up to 200 amps. I get quite a lot of sun where I live and my hope is that this battery along with the solar panels will allow me to power my music studio entirely by solar with enough excess capacity for a rainy day here and there. So let's see how it works out. I won't be cutting it open to look inside but after watching other people like Will Price do that in their videos I know that the cells, the BMS and the internal construction are all really high quality. Everything's really clean and shiny and it has these retractable rope handles for easy lifting. It's a large battery but it's lighter than it looks. In fact this one 200 amp hour battery weighs the same as just one of my three lead acid batteries and there's no acid to deal with, no fumes, no topping up the electrolyte. I have it set up in the basement where the sound of my inverter won't disturb my recordings up in the studio. I have the inverter and the solar charge controller connected and these big clamps are for a Noco Genius Pro 50 charger that lets me top up the battery when there isn't much sun for a few days. And that's plugged into a smart socket so I can turn it on and off with my phone. Finally, I have these two clips that connect to a voltage meter and a low voltage alarm up in the studio. And up there, I have the solar coming into a Renogy Wanderer 30 amp controller with a watt meter below and a Bluetooth module that lets me see statistics on my phone. So this is the room that I power by solar. It's where I make music and edit videos. I have a desktop PC, a fairly large monitor, a keyboard, speakers, a few other bits of music gear and some lights. And in the evening when the lights are on, the whole room draws just under 300 watts. When I'm working on a big project or rendering a video for example, that can go up to 400 watts. And during the day when the lights are off and I'm just doing light work, it usually draws less than 200 watts. So what I'm going to do is fully charge the battery, then disconnect the solar panels entirely and see how long this battery can single-handedly power my whole studio. This watt meter will measure the amp hours that the room consumes. So at the end, I'll have an idea of how many real world watt hours the battery can provide. The battery is fully charged. I've disconnected the solar panels and I've reset the watt meter and I'm using a spare phone to time how many hours the battery lasts. It's been three hours and 41 minutes. I've used 626 watt hours and the battery is at 13.2 volts under load. I've had the PC and monitor on all day and I'm at seven hours and 40 minutes, 1255 watt hours and the battery is at 13 volts. It's evening now. So the lights are on and it's been 9 hours and 18 minutes, 1530 watt hours and the battery is still at 13 volts. It's been 10 hours now and I'm about to run a computer back up and go to bed. The battery is still at 13 volts. I left the computer running a backup during the night and that took about 3 hours before it shut down and it used another couple of hundred watt hours. So this morning I'm at 2034 watt hours and the battery is at 12.7 volts. I'm starting the timer from zero and at the end I'll add the previous day's time plus the three hours the computer ran during the night to whatever time we get today. Another hour and a half, 2310 watt hours and the battery is at 11.5 volts. It's getting pretty close to the end now. My low voltage alarm is going off now and I know I could squeeze a few more watt hours out of the battery but I don't want to bring it right down to zero and risk shortening the long term lifespan of this battery so I'm calling it quits here. So let's see what I got in the end. I was able to run the studio for a total of 14 hours and 43 minutes just on the battery alone with no solar coming in and I got 2334 watt hours 
which is 194.5 amp hours. And that's after the roughly 5 to 10% loss caused by my inverter, which means that this battery's capacity is actually more than the advertised 200 amp hours. In a time when so many manufacturers exaggerate the performance of their products, it's nice to have something that actually exceeds the specs that they claim. So this battery gets a big thumbs up from me. And if you find this video useful or interesting, I'd appreciate a thumbs up from you. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.